Hello everyone, I'm Sarah and welcome to Friday Fun with Sarah. What we're going to do today is we're going to walk through my container garden. I'm going to show you some fun things that I've crocheted that you can crochet whether you have a garden or just a patio or just want to have for your house. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I'm also going to give you a couple of gardening tips that I use in my own container garden. So come along with me and let's go for a walk through my container garden. So as we step out onto my back patio, there's that doily that we made yesterday, the entertaining doily. And there's some flowers. And this is just my back patio, the top. I have two patios. I have two decks, what we call the shade deck and the lower deck down there where I have all my containers. But what I wanted to show you next is, I have the view of Pikes Peak. Isn't that wonderful? I forgot to show you my beautiful hummingbird feeder. I don't have any birds out there this morning, but I'm sure they'll stop by this afternoon. All right, let's go down the steps and check out my container garden. Now my garden down here isn't all matchy-matchy. I call it eclectic. I have a brown rug, I have green pads on my swing, several kinds of chairs that don't match, but that's okay, I like it that way. All right, let's move on to the garden area. So starting over here, I have some cucumbers that are started, and those cucumbers will grow up that trellis and across the side of my wood banister. Next to that, I have strawberries. I have cherry tomatoes. Aren't those pretty? Won't be long and those will be loaded with lots of sweet 100 tomatoes. Now you may have noticed my bright rainbow and some bright flowers. And I like to hang these up because it brings color to the garden and it also lets the bees know there's flowers over here. I also have Humphrey the owl and he helps keep the birds away. He scares them off for me. <laughs> all right, so there's those strawberries. I have sweet 100 tomatoes and I grow all three of them together. And the key to growing good tomatoes on a patio is lots of pruning. I have some jalapeno peppers. And then here I've got a little bit of squash. This is a yellow crookneck squash. Hopefully those will do well. And then in this corner, I have sunflowers, and those are gonna grow nice and tall and fill in. Those down there are, are my Shasta daisies. You can see I have more flowers. These two containers here are filled with a mixture of zinnias and marigolds. Again, flowers to bring the bees to my garden. And you can see I've added some of those flowers as well. Now those flowers there are made with the scrubby yarn from Hobby Lobby just like the ones over by the tomatoes. And those are super good for being outside because they're used to being wet and made to be wet. That Shasta Daisy, the flowers have died. On this side, we have basil and then three containers of lettuce. I have a leaf lettuce, a green lettuce, and then a red lettuce. We like lots of lettuce here. You'll also notice here on the railing of my deck, I have some pots that have some flowers growing in them. They're not big enough to see just yet. And I have that daisy chain. It adds color and fun to my garden. Over in the corner there, I have parsley. And then that big one in the middle is more sunflowers. That big rectangle there, those are spinach. I need to get those clipped up and taken out. A lot of those need to go in the compost pile. I'll talk to you about that in just a minute. Those two buckets there are hydrangeas that I'm trying to save. This little corner over here has some cilantro and a couple of different kinds of flowers. And you can see I made one of those doilies called the entertaining doily, only I made it a little bit smaller. Now the bucket to the right there, that's what I call my compost bucket. I throw out my old coffee grounds and only vegetables and fruits, mix them around with new soil and make lots of good compost. That's sort of my work area. You can see I've got some pots, my hose, 
you know, and place to work. So this is one of my favorite places to crochet. It's a swing. You can see I've got my yarn there. I've got my cactus drink. It's actually just lemon water. And there's precious little Rosie. I don't know where Maximo went. And then there I've got a, a doily or a, you know, placemat there with one another pot that's going to be flowers. Now you'll notice that a lot of my things are not very big. The growing season in Colorado is a little bit shorter, or I should say in this area of Colorado, is a little bit shorter than some of the other areas. And so I've only been able to start my garden around Mother's Day. I start a lot of my seeds inside and then bring them out here. For the best blooms, add a little bit of Epsom salt to your garden. It'll give it magnesium. Add banana peels. It'll give it potassium. And get your leftover coffee. Mix the three of those together with some soil and you'll have the best soil ever for lots of wonderful flowers and veggies and fruits. And if you want to keep the pests away, like raccoons, squirrels, and even the deer and wildlife, sprinkle coffee around the edge of your garden if it's in the ground or in your pots and they'll leave them alone. So this is pretty much my garden and I keep everything in containers and I have a lot of fun with it. And I, and I know you will too, if you just, a lot of people can't garden because they can't get out and work in the dirt anymore. Maybe their knees are sore or something. And this is a fun way to have all the vegetables that we can eat because you don't need to grow rows and rows of corn if there's just two of you, unless you're planning on selling it, right? The yarns we used today were these two mostly. We used a lot of cotton in some of the projects that we have, of course. The hangers are made out of cotton that have the flowers in them. The chains with flowers, those are all made out of acrylic yarn. This is the Yarn Bee Scrubology Scrub It. This is the yarn that we used to make those bright, colorful, scrubby flowers. Like I said, it's scrubby yarn, so it's great to use outside because it's made to get wet. The other yarn that I used was the Burnett Maker. And this is what I use to make the big entertaining mat. It works great. It's made for being outside and it's strong because it has nylon also. Now, other yarns that are good to use outside is, of course, 100% cotton. Um, they're made, you know, to absorb water, so you're going to have to watch that a little bit. And some of the blends that have cotton and polyester are good because you're going to get better hold up. It's going to hold up better. All right, so this is my lower deck. We call it the sun deck. The upper deck we call the shade deck. So anytime you're in the area, give me a call and you can come out here and have a drink with me and we'll sit and have some more yarny talk.